Good morning and welcome to Washington National Cathedral. My name is Randy Hollerith. I'm Dean of the Cathedral. And as always, I'm so glad that you have decided to join us for this brief service of morning prayer. God bless you today and every day. Let us begin. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let us pray. O Lord of heaven and earth, of life and love, of peace and hope, it is in you that we live and move and have our being. We greet you this day. We salute you. We thank you for this new beginning, for this chance to be alive. Because of you, we are both forgiven and free. May we sense your gentle touch as you help us up and out of our early morning fits and starts. Please open our eyes today, our minds, our hearts, our hands. Help us to see and experience you in all the corners of life, in all dimensions of your creation. Please continue to push us and pull us so that we can better know you and love you. O oh Lord, hang in and hang tough with us and those for whom we pray this day. Because we need your help and your courage, we need your understanding and your grace. We need your perspective and your peace. We need your patience and your healing. And more than anything, we need you. Amen. Our collect for today. O God, whose blessed Son came into the world that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life, grant that having this hope we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our reading for today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, verses 7 through 10. Jesus said, Who among you would say to your slave who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, Come here at once and take your place at table? Would you not rather say to him, Prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink, and later you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only that which we ought to have done. Here ends the lesson. For many of us, the sophistication of our faith really never developed much further than what we learned in the Sunday school. For example, we know that God isn't a bearded male figure sitting on a cloud in heaven. But for some of us, it's kind of tough to get that image out of our heads. Many of us were taught that there would one day be a judgment day for each of us after we die. And so some of us think of God as this figure in the sky who is keeping track of all the bad things we have done, as well as all the good things we have done, marking them off in his book and then tallying them up when we die. Whichever way the ledger leans determines whether we go up or down so to speak. But of course, that's not how God works at all. There is no heavenly ledger full of check marks and X's. God isn't keeping score to see if we are worthy of saving 
If God were keeping score, then we would all be in serious trouble. The fact is, we can never earn our way into heaven. The good things we do, the right things we do, the loving things we do are not heavenly bonus points. In fact, Jesus tells us today that when we love our neighbor, when we forgive our enemies, when we care for the poor or work for peace, we are only doing what we are supposed to do. There is no extra credit. As Jesus says, we have done only that, we have done only what we ought to have done. When I was a kid, I can remember one fall raking up the leaves in our backyard. Our yard was covered in oak trees, and the amount of leaves every year was slightly overwhelming. You had to rake them into a big tarp and then somehow figure out how to drag that tarp from the backyard to the front yard so that you could dump the leaves on the street to be picked up sometime that week. And it usually took at least half a dozen trips to get that job done. And in my family, the only person who hated raking leaves more than me was my father. So, of course, raking leaves was my job. I remember one year after I got them all up and deposited them on the street, I went to see my dad and to let him know that I was finished. I was pretty happy with myself, I must admit. I had hauled a lot of leaves and the yard looked stunning. And I announced that I had finished the job in the same way that I might have announced to my father that I just won the Nobel Peace Prize. I'll never forget the look on my father's face as he lifted his head from the work he was doing at his desk and responded, that's great, son. What do you want, a medal? Well, he really popped my balloon, but he was making the point that I hadn't really done anything special. I had only done my share of the work to help the family. We can't earn our way into heaven. We don't get bonus points. God loves us when we are doing the things we're supposed to be doing, and God loves us when we aren't. The truth is, is that God saves us in spite of ourselves. It's all Christ's doing and not our own. Therefore, we don't try to follow the way of Jesus to buy our salvation. Rather, we strive to follow the way of Jesus as a way of saying thank you for the salvation we have already been given. Amen. Now will you join with me as we pray the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, you alone know the secrets of our hearts. You alone understand the burdens we carry and the pain that we bear. As we make our way through this life, we need your healing grace. Grant us not only those things that we ask for, but more importantly, give us the things that we need. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours. On this morning, we lift up to you all those who are on our hearts and minds today. I pray for peace in the Holy Land. I pray for the people of Israel and for all those who are 
suffering and grieving, who have lost someone they love in this conflict. I pray for all the Palestinians, all those in Gaza who have lost someone they love and for all those who have died. Grant us peace, dear Lord, peace between Christians and Muslims and Jews, peace between Palestinians and Israelis, peace and justice in your holy land. And I pray for the people of Ukraine that you will watch over and bless them, that you will be with those who have loved and lost and with those who are serving every day to defend their nation. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen.